Hi everybody and welcome to Fab Tax. I'm Rosemary and thanks for stopping by. In today's video I have some Look For Less DIYs. This is actually the bonus video that I mentioned on my last Planters DIY. So I guess you could call this Planters 3. And if you haven't seen the first two Planter DIY videos, I will link those in the description box below. But like those, these DIYs were made from Dollar Tree and upcycled materials and feature modern farmhouse and boho designs. The other videos also feature several dupe and look for less designs. But since these were all look for less, I figured I'd change it up a little bit with the title. In any event, there's a lot to cover, so let's jump right in. Okay, so we're going to start with the promised ladder planter DIY, and that's going to require five of the Dollar Tree galvanized oblong buckets, and also five sets of the Dollar Tree S-hooks. And then from Lowe's, I picked up two of these six foot by two inch pine boards. These run about $2.50 each. And also two sets of the large five gallon paint stirrer sticks. And those run about 98 cents a pack and they come three to a pack. And then some dark walnut stain that I had on hand from my outdoor furniture refinishing project. To construct the ladder, first I took the paint sticks and I cut them off right basically at the nape there where the little handle uh, begins. And so uh, what I did to do that was just take a handsaw and also my miter box and then I just cut it off there at the top and then I proceeded to stain all of those cut pieces with my dark walnut stain. If you're not familiar with staining it's super easy you just put it on a rag and then um, proceed to just wipe it over the wood and it brings out all that wonderful uh, wood grain um, colors and all the different dimensions and it's one of my favorite things to do it's just so easy and gives you such a great effect so quickly so here are my stained pieces and this is the front and you can see where on the back it has the print from the paint stick and I'm going to just take it on the front and I'm going to measure in two centimeters and just place a dot there on each side of my paint stick and measure again in two centimeters and place a dot there in the middle and that's going to be where I drill the holes for my slats and so I'm just taking my handy dandy little drill there and drilling the holes through and I'll do that to each side of the slat. While I have the drill out I'm going to just go ahead and drill the holes in the flower buckets and I just needed to change the drill bit to a wider bit so that it will accommodate the size of the S hooks and then I'm going to go just kind of to the back of where that crease is and I'm going to drill a hole there. So see there's a little crease on the side of the uh, flower bucket from the Dollar Tree and then I'll just drill the hole to the back of that. And then those are some jagged edges there so I just went back with some duct tape and placed it there over the hole and then I'm going to go and drill it again. I just know that when I'm going to plant the plants in this I will in fact cut myself on those little jagged edges so I just want to make sure that those are covered and it is much more safe. So then once those holes have been drilled I can easily go in with the Dollar Tree S hooks and just hook them right into the sides of the little planter. Now from here these planters can pretty much be good to go if you just wanted to leave the uh, lettering from the Dollar Tree on there. But I want to go in with some different wording on the front and so first I tried to just kind of paint over the top and it actually does a pretty good job. You can still see the embossing on the, the original lettering. So I decided I wanted to go back and I'm going to use some of this balsam wood. This is that really thin wood you can get at all the craft stores. And I had it on, on hand in my craft stash so I thought well, let's use it. And um, I just cut out five inch pieces of that. This stuff's real easy to cut. You can cut it with regular scissors. And I'm going to just paint those black and just glue those on top. And so I'd like to put the phrase bloom where you're planted. It's always been one of my favorite phrases. And I'm going to go ahead and just give it a little bit of outlining with my white paint marker. Just give it a little definition. And then I am going to be doing that kind of Ray Dunn lettering. And here I'll just show you real quick. These are five inches long and I have five letters in the next word that I'm going to be doing which is where and so what I'm basically doing is just making sure that the lettering is done within the inch mark so I've lined up that uh, ruler there at the bottom and so I know that when I do my um, W I'm going to make it nice and long and thin and then I'm going to keep it within that one inch range and so you see here as long as I'm staying within that one, ra uh, one inch range and I'm um, you know, kind of following that Ray Dunn look where I put the cross uh, on the H way up high. The E cross will go up high, the horizontal line 
will go way up high as well. And then I do kind of mess up this R a little bit. The R is supposed to go in the crease there, the, the line that goes down. But um, anyway, I, I fix it on the next one. But the E again, see everything is done within that one inch frame and then you're easily able to get that lettering. Now since my next word is R and that's only three letters long, I'm going to go ahead and leave that first between the zero and the one blank and then I'll do the A between the one and the two. And then the R will be between the two and the three. And this time I'm going to do my down line properly. It goes kind of there in that little crease. And then the E will now be between the three and the four. Again, making my horizontal line, the top horizontal line kind of way up high there. And um, then I'll leave that last inch blank. Now for the word plant it, since that is a seven letters long, it is creating a little bit of a problem for me since these uh, wood pieces are only five inches long and I can't do my one inch rule. So what I did was I flipped the ruler over to the centimeter side and I'm pretty much going at a two centimeter per letter um, kind of guide. It is a kind of give or take. Some are like two, some are one and a half but um, pretty much going by like a two and a half centimeter guide on that side. And this of course is only if you're using like a five inch piece of wood or a five inch painted rectangle. And then I'm just gonna take my finished pieces of wood and I'm going to glue those to the fronts of the pots. I'm using my favorite tight bond glue here, uh, but if not, you might wanna use like an E6000 for this. I would not use hot glue. It has some problems sticking to the metal. To construct the ladder, I'm going to take my ruler and measure down four inches. Uh, this will be on the pine board. And then once I get to that measurement, I'm going to draw a line across at that spot. And then I want to take one of my paint sticks. Now I want to take the machine cut edge. And by machine cut, I mean the cut that was on this paint stick, not the cut that I handmade. And I'm going to align that up with the edge of the board as well as that white line. And then I'm going to take a number six screw that's about one inch long. It is not about, it is a one inch long number six screw. And then I'm going to just drill that right through the hole that I made and into the wood below. Now, before I continue, I just wanna stop for a quick editing note. Now, if you notice here, I am applying, this is actually the back of the ladder and I am applying the paint sticks to the ladder with the good side up. That is incorrect. It should be on the other side where the paint stick numbers are. The numbers should be facing you at this stage. I didn't realize that till the end. I was like, oh, I did it backwards. I had to go back and flip everything. So uh, at this point, everything else will be fine. It's just at this point, you should have those numbers up. Okay, back to ladder construction. To attach my next cross piece, I'm going to place my ruler on the ladder and then I'm going to take another machine cut edge. Now this is important. It always needs to be the machine cut edge on this side because this is how you're going to get everything level and straight. And so I'm going to place the ruler uh, on the on the pine board and then place the machine edge cut again lining it up with the edge. See how it's lined up there with the edge of the pine board. So um, it's one ruler in between and then that machine cut edge goes right up against the edge of the board. Now on the other side, I'm again going to measure down from the top exactly four inches and make my white line there. I am then going to go ahead and attach that first piece right at that white line and again making it flush with the side of the pine board. However, this is the only piece that will come out that way. This is because you are bound to have variations in any hand cut woods. To adjust for these variations, I'm going to scoot down to the bottom of the ladder and apply the last rung next. And so I'm going to line up that ruler at the bottom of my pine board, which I don't have a picture of, I'm sorry. But as long as the edge of your ruler is square with the bottom of the pine board and your rung is square with the top of the ruler, you are good to go. But as you can see, that is going to leave a gap now. Uh, it's not going to be flush. Your rung will not be flush with the edge, but that's fine. It's the, the ruler is machine cut. Remember, your rung is uh, hand cut and the ruler is machine cut. So unfortunately, we got to go with the machines. But you can see there where they are a little off, but it's on the back, so it really doesn't matter. And when you flip it around, it looks just beautiful. You can't see any of that gapping, of course, because now that's on the back side. And all the little buckets look so cute. Of course, you don't have any little numbers there. 
uh, if you're doing it correctly. Although it did look cute with the numbers, but I did want to go with, since this was a look for less dupe video, I did want to keep it original to the inspiration piece. And here you can see it with some pretty flowers. And then here it is styled in the way that the original piece was, so you can see the similarities between the two. Now the uh, other piece had also a different color of stain on the crossbars. I didn't have that color stain, plus um, I just kind of like it all dark better anyway. And that too was part of the beauty of DIYing because you can customize things the way you want, the colors you want, as well as, for example, the lettering um, on the front of the basket. For the next DIY, I will be upcycling this springform pan. Now the base of this pan never sat right, it always leaked, and I think it has a better life ahead as a planter. To make the base, I will be using these craft sticks that I got from Walmart, but you can also get these at Lowe's with the paint sticks. They're about 98 cents for the pack. And then I'm also going to take some Dollar Tree craft sticks. I'm going to cut off the bottoms, uh, probably about a quarter of the bottom off, because I just want it to be long enough to hold uh, the three of the larger craft sticks together when I glue the backs, uh, glue it to the backs here. But I do need to leave about a half an inch on the bottom for where I have to cut around for the form. And then I'm going to just use some hot glue to glue the small craft sticks to the back of the large craft sticks. Next I took my pan and I placed it on top of my wood. Now um, I did place the little lock at the top. I wish I would have put it on the bottom. It would have looked more like the original. But um, I just laid it on top of the wood and then went back with a sharpie marker and just outlined the wood. I wanted to line it up so that you see where the, you know, the edges of the top piece are covering the metal. And so I just lined it up that way and then traced it with my Sharpie marker. And now I'm going back with some scissors and just cutting out the shape. And I am cutting slightly to the outside of the line because I do actually want it to be a little bit bigger. And as you're cutting, you'll see that maybe the wood starts to kind of break apart. Just kind of take it slow and uh, reposition the scissors. And also uh, when you get to bits that might be a little bit challenging i found it helpful to also kind of just cut some some of the wood away uh, it's not that difficult you just don't want to have the splintering and such and making it sound like it's some kind of really difficult thing to do but you know if just trying to give you some little tips if it's um, splintering or if it's uh, getting a little tough just kind of cut some of the pieces away and then that'll help with um, making the cut and then once that was complete, I did go back and repeat the process to create a second little half moon form for the back of my planter. And then once I had my two pieces cut, it was time to apply them to the bottom of my pan. And so to do that, I'm going to be using some tight bond glue here. You could also e use the E6000 glue. And so I'm just applying it to my pan. And then I'm going to just place the uh, wood piece on top. Now, if you notice, I am going to leave a gap here in the back. I want to show you in the back because I want to make sure that that glue has enough space to really set up and catch it in very pretty place. And then on the inside, although hot glue isn't so great with sticking to metal, um, it is pretty good if you're going to just kind of use it as almost like a caulk. So I'm going to go back with my hot glue and just apply a nice thick bead of the hot glue there to the back of my wood piece. And then I took my second piece of wood and I repeated the process on the back side. This time I did apply the glue to the wood. This gave me a bigger amount of glue that I could work with versus just that little tiny bead that you could get uh, on the edge of the pan. And then I went back again with the hot glue on the inside. To add a little color, I'm gonna just use some of my Waverly Antique Wax and just rub that right on and into the wood. And then I just wanted to point out that if you do, did want to use this for some live plants, you would need to put a waterproof container inside. This Land O'Lakes butter container would work perfect. I still have butter in there, so I'm not going to take that lid off, but um, you get the idea. Then I'm just going to go ahead and fill it with some Dollar Tree moss and some Dollar Tree succulents. And you can see here from the original that um, it's a pretty close match. Uh, except for the price, the original from Wayfair was $93. And the DIY version from the old pan costs about $1 in materials. For the next DIY, I'm going to be using one of these Dollar Tree black buckets, as well as these Kaleidoscope party favors from the favor section of the Dollar Tree. And what I'm going to do with the party favors is I'm going to use those as little legs for my planter. 
And so all I'll need to do is paint those black and then glue those to the bottom of the bucket. For the bucket itself, I'll need to remove the handle, and so I just uh, use my pliers to pull out the one side, and then the other side just pop right out. Next, I just took some blue painter's tape, and I taped off the section right below the rim, and then down about two and a half inches, I put another piece of tape, and then just around the very base of the bucket, I placed a third piece of tape. Next, I took my white paint marker, and below the lip of the bucket, I just began drawing a line kind of close to the lip, maybe about a quarter of an inch below. And um, you notice that I'm just kind of hand drawing this. That is the look on the inspiration piece as well, because it is that kind of bohemian, natural, handcrafted look. And so again, you know, we're not doing that machine exact cut. And therefore doing these kind of dashed wavy lines mm -hmm. is actually in line with the inspiration. Then I went to the bottom of that top rim of the bucket and just again began drawing that kind of dashed a little bit wavy line it's not wavy on purpose it's just because you know i'm drawing it and hand drawing it and this kind of has a wave to it but again doesn't need to be exact because that's the look that we're going for and then once so i now i hit the top line and the bottom line and then i began drawing some vertical lines now as you'll see at the end of this piece i did make these lines i think too far apart and so I did eventually go back and place another line in the middle so uh, once I was in the editing process I could see that I had not made these close enough versus the original so I did go back and do all of these lines smaller for the next pattern I'm again going to be drawing a line around the bottom piece of that tape there and again, these just dashed kind of wavy lines. And I will take this all the way around the bucket, but for illustration purposes, I'm gonna just stop there and begin on the second part of the pattern, which would be to apply a straight line around the top of the next tape. And then I did wanna keep going back and refilling that uh, paint marker. If you're not familiar with them, you really do have to press down on them and make sure that you're getting a good flow of paint. Now, after I had my top and bottom line, I went and made a line straight through the middle of that section as my next step. And then I went back to my bottom line and just above that, I drew another line all the way around. It's just a little section in between. And then I'll do that to the top line as well, to just create another little section in between. And you'll be surprised when you see the original, how it um, really does you know, kind of go a little wavy and not so uh, neat. So anyway, I'm gonna now go with um, kind of an arrow pattern and just start making the lines diagonally in this pattern. And again, I did have to go back and do these smaller, once I saw the original, I should have been doing two times as many lines here. So I just fixed that by going back and making another line in between all of these lines. So, but if you wanna do it right from the beginning, that would be make these little spaces smaller. They shouldn't be that big. Or maybe you prefer the bigger design. In that case, leave it as is. And now for the next pattern, I'm again going to be drawing a line at the top and then again at the bottom of that section. And of course I will be again doing this all the way around the bucket, but for this illustration, I'll just be doing this section. And so once my top and bottom have been drawn, I'm again going to do a line straight through the middle and now I'm going to go back with just the top section and create a, just an X pattern all the way across. So I'm just going to draw an X and then draw an X right next to that X and then so on and so forth all the way around the bucket. Next, I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to draw a line straight through the middle of the X's. And again, don't worry about it being wavy. That is part of the design. Next, in that bottom section, I'm going to just draw vertical lines straight down. And again, here is where I did need to go back and make those smaller to, ma to match the original, uh, granted, but, but if this size works for you, then by all means, keep it this way. And I think it looks real good like this as well. For the feet, I took my painted kaleidoscopes and on that rounded edge, which actually worked out well because the bottom of the bucket is kind of like concave. So that rounded top on the kaleidoscope actually worked 
to um, kind of go in line with the line of the bottom of the bucket. And then I just attached them with some E6000 glue. And then here is the finished project. You can see here where I did go back and add those additional lines because I did want it to look more like this original piece. And um, it comes in pretty close. The original from Wayfair is $46 though, and this Dollar Tree version is about two. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this Look for Less Planters DIY number three, featuring high-end modern farmhouse and boho styles for a lot less. If you haven't seen videos one and two, I will link those in the description box below. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to give a thumbs up and please share with any family and friends you think will also enjoy this video. If you have a favorite or plan on making any of these or have a question, please let me know in the comments. And if you're not already a subscriber and you like what you see, please consider subscribing. We'd love to have you join the family. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time on FabTax where we're putting the extra in ordinary one DIY at a time.